How's it going, Skittle Squad? This is Kelvin here, and today we are going to be making another Dungeon Quest video. In this one, I'm going to be listing the top 12 tips and tricks that you guys have listed as the must-knows for Dungeon Quest. But before I begin, make sure you smash the like button, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. Without further ado, let's get this party started. Alrighty, before I start the video, let's play a game. Everybody here has a chance to vote for the most useful and best tip in this video. Just make sure you watch the entire video, remember the number, put it down in the comment section down below with your username as well. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna find a number with the most votes, find a poster, and give them a free legendary. Of course, definitely put down your Roblox username so I can tell that your vote is legitimate. And who knows, maybe someone randomly in the comment section helping us vote will also be rewarded as well. So, this is our game. Let's play. So starting off with tip number one, make sure you have shift lock mode. It's actually pretty self-explanatory and it's very easy to do. It's also a very common tip as well, but shift lock mode allows you the best chances to beat a dungeon. First off, you don't have to worry about shooting your skills the wrong way and it keeps your character in control where you can continue to face your targets. And even though mobile players don't have that same option, they can still definitely zoom in their camera and play in first person mode, pretty much giving them a knockoff shift lock mode. Tip number two, to successfully be able to beat mobs like elementalists and dark mages, you should strafe left and right to dodge very linear and straight attacks while getting closer to your targets so that you can finish them off. Tip number three, you can calculate your potential upgrades, the potential of your weapons or your armor simply by multiplying by 10. So what I mean is when you bring up your inventory and let's say you take a look at the weapon. So you see this weapon with this certain amount of base damage here and you want it to upgrade it by 10 slots for example. So what happens is you go upgrade by 10 slots and 10 times 10 is 100 which means that by upgrading your weapon by 10 slots, you increase the weapon's spell power or physical power by 100. So we're going to go upgrade and show you exactly what's up. The specific weapon right here, we're going to upgrade it 10 times in spell power. And now that we took a look back and it has just increased by 100. And there we go. Alright, tip number four is to make sure you don't keep jumping around when it comes to escaping from warrior mobs. What I mean is there are mobs in certain dungeons that run really fast to catch up to you. And if you run in a straight line while jumping, you can usually keep your distance. However, if you keep jumping up and down, left and right, your speed slows down and the distance you travel is less. Therefore, letting mobs catch up with you and eventually the monsters will probably hurt you and oof you. So the tip here is to stop jumping around like a monkey. Alright, number 5, how to remove lag. Guys, I cannot stress how much lag can ruin your gameplay. When you play with YouTubers, when you play with streamers on Twitch, you're gonna have a bunch of people enter the dungeon. Sometimes even just a regular server without a YouTuber at all. And guess what happens? When there's a lot of people, there's a lot of lag. Lag will stop your skills from activating. Lag will stop your skills from being used at all. And of course, the question is how can you reduce lag? You do want to go to your settings, turn off the music, turn off the damage numbers, and then you go to the top left corner, your menu, go to settings for Roblox, and then Go to the manual graphic mode and turn your graphics quality all the way to one. Yeah, to the very left. This way, reducing the amount of stress on your computer or your mobile device and henceforth let you have an easier time in the dungeon. Tip number six, do not go into a dungeon without ample HP. 
I cannot stress how many times I've done live streams and players have joined my live streams and try to do dungeons with me, but they don't bring enough HP. And when you don't bring enough HP, it doesn't matter how good you are at dodging, because even if you're a god at dodging attacks, you cannot dodge lag, right? You also can dodge other players getting in front of you, luring monsters to you, baiting monsters to you, or just causing a distraction. So the deal here is to make sure you always bring enough HP or else you're gonna end up oofing very early in a dungeon and end up just being a leecher, an AFK, or somebody that's not very helpful at all. Once again, bring enough HP. All right, so this is tip number seven. If your aim is to get a lot of gold, Make sure you're doing an insane dungeon instead of a nightmare. Because insane dungeon are roughly half as hard as a nightmare dungeon, but the gold that you can get from it is only around a little bit off, something close to 25 to 30 percent. So we're looking at a lot more gold for a lot less work. So make sure next time, if you're running low on gold for upgrades on items, on your gear, make sure you choose the right dungeon to do. Choose an insane, make it go easy, make it go fast, finish it up early, and you get a ton of gold. And of course, you can also sell those items as well. Those insane dungeon items aren't too far off from the nightmares ones. You don't lose much gold, but you save a lot of time. And that is it for tip number seven. Tip number eight. This is to make sure you swap your weapons or your skills a little slower than you think. Because it has been a common problem where I notice players who have tried to swap skills or staffs and they end up glitching themselves. Honestly, it's not something that happens to me a lot since I main a warrior. But Logan right here has put this tip down and he wants to warn everybody to slow down a little bit so that you don't end up like him where he went to wave 200 in way defense where he got in glitch and he ended up losing all his progress all right this next tip is to memorize the movement of the bosses this one seems a little difficult and seems a little overboard when it comes to remembering a lot of movements of the bosses but if you want to be known as a pro you want to beat these dungeons easy peasy you're gonna to need to know these bosses there's a few different types of bosses. Some of them you gotta rotate around. Some of them are stationary bosses that doesn't move too much. Some of them are bosses that kind of moves really fast all around the place. But generally knowing these bosses and memorizing its movements, its patterns, is gonna give you the easiest time when it comes to beating these dungeons. And also, another tip from Jack here is to make sure you remember, every five waves in wave defense, there's a boss. Every 15 waves, you get loot. But not only that, but the difficulty multiplier does increase. So there we go for tip number 9. Alright, so this next one is also very simple. This is tip number 10. This one is to make sure you guys bring ample HP when you consider do dungeons. That's right, make sure you bring enough, don't rush yourself. If you have to do Nightmare Dungeon, you do not have to jump into Hardcore. If you do it in hardcore, you oof once, you lose the entire dungeon. But if you skip on hardcore, you can do it as many times as you want, beat the dungeon, and get your reward. There we go, very simple tip. Don't rush to do hardcore, finish the dungeon, that's what's important. Tip number 11. I kind of put them all in one place because these tips kind of work for different bosses. One of them, by Gacha, is that he wants to tell you guys you can actually defeat monsters right before you start the dungeon in Desert Temple. Then we got Kenny, he's suggesting that you hug the wall whenever you fight the spider. Yes, there is a little section that you can hug the wall to protect yourself from getting hurt by the spider in Pirate Map. And then we have from Jack, Pirate Demon Buzz has a health draining effect where if they hit you or they kill players around you, he heals up and gets some of his HP back. Alright, so the last but not least best tip of all to follow in Dungeon Quest is to make sure you subscribe. 
definitely subscribe to the channel and join the Skittle Squad so you don't miss out on any tip videos, carry videos, live streams, and more. So thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications, follow me on Roblox, and join our group. All that information will be down in the description box below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until we play again next time, peace out, y'all. Thank <laughs> you.